Hey guys, Easy Science here. Studying for an exam or just learning for fun? You've come to the right place. So today's topic, a major introduction to one of calculus's major topics, the derivative. So the derivative is basically a slope. You all know what a slope is. Here we have the formula for slope, m is equal to change in y divided by change in x. Let's take the graph of x squared for example, or even better, we have the graph 2x right here. Oh, yep, so y is equal to 2x. So, how do we find the slope of this? Slope is rate of change of the position. That basically the derivative. So, if we want to represent the slope, we would just go here, right slope is equal to blah blah blah. Since it's a line, we can just find one point, let's say point one, change in y, for one would be two, and then it went two here, sorry, it went two up in that one point, and then in the x direction, it went one to the right. So one to the right in the x direction change in x on the bottom one and change in y two to the top okay so our slope would be two for a curved line it doesn't work like that if we subtract the point let's say two which would be four and then we subtract one before minus one here minus one and that would be two minus one which would be 3 divided by 1 but it's a curved line and you could only use that for lines so that wouldn't be really logical so that's where the derivative idea comes in so here derivative is if you zoomed in infinitely on one point so let's say we want to find derivative at x equals 3 the rate of change you check this box and you zoom in infinitely. Like with the limit idea, it will be limit as x approaches 3 of x squared. So, what would it approach? It would approach the point 9. Sorry for my 9. 9, right? We want to, but when you zoom in far enough, it's going to look like singular line where you could find the slope or there's the idea of the tangent line it's basically that but you're drawing onto the slope a line sorry here better just put a line a tangent line basically it's just a line given to a curve that just touches one point so at that point x equals 3 here x equals 3 the tangent line is equal to the curve so at x equals 3 we can evaluate the tangent line right so I have this nice little formula of calculating the derivative so a is in this case let's just put an a there a would be this point uh lost little point plane sorry and f of a would be the function that you input a into so f of a in our case would be equal to x squared or let's just do a squared for now whoa my mouse had some difficulties there or make it a bit nicer a squared so let's take point three let's do a equals three so what would it be rate of the, the delta will be equal to rate of or change so in our case what is the change in a and then what is the change in f of a that can be depicted by this function here. H 
Okay, here. This is where the fun stuff happens. Let me take this away. One second. So, watch. F of A. We already know what that is. F of A is when we insert it. F of A. And on the bottom, it would just be A. But then there's an H. This is where the derivative comes in. H is a slight budge to the right. We would write this depicting limit as H approaches zero. Because it doesn't actually reach zero, it just zooms in on zero. So it becomes infinitely small, infinitesimal. So it would become zero point zero zero take me it I would never reach there. It would just be a small budge to the right. Instantaneous change. A super small change so that we could calculate the derivative. So evaluating this, just the nor without the H, normal uh slope calculation, but with a slight budge to the right. Minus A which follows into the following formula. Since a minus a cancel out, it would just be h. So let's rewrite this. Oh. Sorry for. I'll just keep that. Or it's okay. So now let's evaluate what this means. So, okay, let's say in real life, I'll just give an example. Let's say you're walking straight. You want to see, you quickly start running. So it will be a double arrow at that point. Before that point, like I talked about limit as x approaches c to the negative, from the left, I would still be a walking pace. But from the right, I would be running pace. But we're zooming in on this point where the instantaneous change happens. That's what we're doing right here. With that small budge to the right, we're seeing how fast we changed at that point. While still having such a small number, not making a difference in the graph or position, right? 9.000001, you could just say that's 9. Right? Okay, let's calculate. F, in our case, would be x squared, or with the formula, a squared. Okay, let's just keep that up. So it would be a, which number do you want to calculate? Let's say a is equal to 3. So 3 plus h squared minus f of 3 divided by h. What is this equal to? Let's evaluate quickly. Okay, where can I write some stuff down? 3 plus h squared. Do we know what that is? Yes. With our factoring rules, we know that it would be equal to. So, if it was a plus b, oh, dang it a plus b squared it will be equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared so what we're doing here I'll, I might even explain in a different video is you can't really have 3 squared plus h squared because it's those two added then squared together. So it's basically instead of having the squared sign, you do 3 plus h multiplied by 3 plus h. And then that would be the, you would get this formula. But we're going to do it with these numbers. So I'll just quickly give it out here. One second. This would be three a squared is nine plus 
two A B, which would be six H plus H squared minus nine. Oh, nine from there. Perfect. Divide by H. Okay, let's look at this differently. Now we have to think of it algebraically. What can we factor out of here? We have to factor it out to make it simpler. We, I see an H there, right? And a 3. So, 3 and H. 3 from the 9, 6, and the other 9, and H from these two. So it will be 3H multiplied by, or here, actually, no, 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 sorry. Before that, even before that, we cancel out the 9 with the 9, because 9 minus 9 is 0. So we're left with these numbers. So, let's see. From here, we can factor out an H. Be 6 plus H divided by H. Oh, H and H cancel out. So we're left with 6 plus H as limit approaches as limit if h approaches zero we plug the zero in which be equal to six the slope at a equals three is six good we could also do it with the other way by just having the squared sign there to find the formula for the slope but i have a different trick which is way way easier and it will save you tons of time. I'll quickly show you it. Okay. I'll make another video sometime on a visualization of this rule. But here I'll just explain in quick form what it is. Even, bef even before that, I found something to show the same process but for the formula. See? Same process here. There. They cancelled out with the H's. And then he got 2A. If we plug A equals 3 in there, we'll get a slope of 6. Okay, that's the slope of X squared. So we would label that as D over DX. What does this mean? D is just the derivative or rate of change of what you've chosen, in this case x squared. dx is with respect to x while keeping respect, in this case it would be dA, while respecting A, keeping it, right? Okay, we can also visualize this or if y is equal to x squared the d over dx can also be said as y with prime and you add primes for whichever derivative you want so you do this process again for second derivative then third fourth only if you need them usually you only need the first derivative so this here is called the power rule you might have heard of it or you might have not but it is the most important rule in derivatives because you use it everywhere in the advanced stuff and the simple stuff basically like I talked about with the prime f prime derivative of f is equal to r multiplied by x to the r minus 1 power let's show you if f is equal to x squared f prime of x will be equal to r is the exponent so it'll be 2x uh, to the 2 to the minus 1 power which is just 2x to first which is equal to 2x like we got right there perfect power rule works you could use this everywhere you remember that one of the best rules out there. Also another concept called the secant line. Secant line. 
I wouldn't say is as important, but still is, is a line that passes through two points instead of one point. Secant line can approach the tangent line too. For example here, we could calculate the slope of the secant line using the same formula. Say we have points 4 and t in our x squared part, we would do <coughs> we would do x of 4, here let's see, it would be the first one, change in y, would be t minus x of 4, so it would be, let's see, or let's, not t, or we could do t squared, because that's usually one of them too, so, so t squared, so it'd be t squared, since, let's just stick with this, x, we plug in t, to be t squared, minus 4 to the second power is 16, minus 16, divided by t minus 4, since 4 is just the rate of change in x, 